pray and I hope that you are all well this morning. Well, it's so good to be alive this morning. Amen. And this morning we are celebrating the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the good news is that he is not dead. He is well alive. And I was talking to him this morning and I must say he sent his love. Anyway, um, this morning we're going to praise him. And... Um, and I just want to welcome you all to our live stream service at your home um, this morning. And we're looking forward to what God is going to say to us. And, and I believe he's there with you. He is, um, you know, all the his angels, he's commanded to be there with you. And we all kind of be together um, this, this hour that we commit to the Lord. And I would like to read from the word of God this morning before we worship God this morning and Jesus said and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness so the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life for God so loved the world for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes, whoever believes in him should not, should not perish, but have eternal life. You know, God say only this group of people can, can be saved when they believe in God. No, he says, whoever. Now, I just want to remind you, wherever you are, as the son of God, as a daughter of God, and maybe you never, you're watching this live stream and you have never met Christ. Maybe this is your time because the Bible is very clear and strongly dis, um, declaring that for, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, his righteousness, he sent to the world, he laid down his life that whoever, whoever, no matter what you have done, no matter what have happened in your past, but right now, whoever believes in him and accept him, Jesus Christ in his, in his life, he will not perish, but have eternal life. And what a good news. And because of that good news, that we can give thanks to our Heavenly Father for his great, great salvation. We can praise him and we can and give him glory our homes from our countries from our city from our villages to the lord heavenly father we thank you we thank you because we know lord god that you are alive lord jesus and this morning we remember Remember that you have done at the cross for saving, for salvation belongs to you. And this morning we can arise together from our homes, from our countries, from our city, from our nation, and worship you for you are the true Christ. You are the God that saved us. And Lord, we pray that you'll bless this time together in the name of
service for Jesus, your King. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power.
Good morning. Uh, grateful to God for the opportunity to be together again. And uh, it's a great day to worship the Lord in this most holiest of week in the calendar year of the Christian Church as we celebrate the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been talking about the Sermon on the Mountain where Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in hearts, they shall see God. But the first uh, beatitude, he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. That's what we have been talking about. And uh, we trust that today God will speak to us afresh and minister to us. Let's just pray. Father, we pray that you will minister to us. You'll grant us recall. You'll help us, Lord God, to see things that we hadn't seen before. We pray for your blessing upon your people, your blessing upon your word, your guide and teach us, Father God, we yes. pray. Give us understanding, Lord God, of what we're going through right now mm -hmm. in this time, Lord God, of the cross. We thank you and honor you today. You're a good God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Jesus said, uh, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And when we understand that Jesus is the king of the kingdom and that he was the one that was speaking and said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We come to realize that there must be something about that that is in the life of Jesus Christ that will help us to understand. We know that Jesus is God. He is the epitome of love. The Bible says God is love. He is the epitome of grace. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. He is the epitome of faith. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the epitome of hope. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ in us is the hope of glory. He is the, the epitome of lowliness and humility. He said, I am meek and lowly. He that comes to me, exchange your yoke for mine, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah. If that is the case, then there must be something in this phrase, the poor in spirit, that Jesus possessed, that we need to look at in the scriptures and find out. Mm -hmm. Because he is the king of the kingdom, he owns the kingdom. In fact, he tells us to seek the kingdom first above everything yes. else. And all the things that you're looking for will be added. And so with that in mind, let, let me read from the book of Philippians. And if this is what it says. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. The Bible says, even though Jesus was God, he did not think it was robbery or something to be grasped, to be equal with God but he made himself of no reputation. Many times in our lives, we want to uh, protect our reputation. And so if somebody tarnishes our reputation, we go to great lengths to try and remedy that. Mm. The Bible tells us that Jesus, 
made himself of no reputation. He was void of any reputation. He was empty of any reputation. He made himself of no reputation at all. And we see that in the life of Jesus Christ, that even though he was the Lord of heaven and earth, he came as a servant and served his own creation. The Bible tells us that even though he was rich, he became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. Amen. And right from the beginning of his life, we see this lowliness of spirit in Jesus Christ that sometimes can cause us to marvel. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yet he said, uh, when people ask him and somebody said to him, I'm going to follow you all the days of my life. And in order to follow me, you better take up your cross and follow me because the foxes have holes. The birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. There was no permanent home for him, even though he created the heavens and the earth. He came in loneliness of spirit to serve you and to serve me. That is an amazing concept of being poor in spirit. And right from the day he was born, we see this. And we see that Jesus is not embarrassed to borrow things from other people. The songwriter talking about uh, the, the birth of Jesus Christ said this, Born in the night, Mary's child, a long way from your home, coming in need, Mary's child, born in a borrowed room. That's a nice song, but Jesus was not born in a borrowed room. It wasn't a room in somebody's home or a room in a mansion or a room in a hotel or a motel. Jesus was born in a stable. And he was not embarrassed to be born in the stable so that you and I may be born in a room. But the hymn writer and the songwriter said, He came in need, Mary's child, born in a borrowed room. And we see him do this quite often, that he will borrow things. The Bible tells us that the borrower is servant to the lender, and he came to serve, and he would often borrow things from others. He borrowed a boy's lunch to perform a miracle and feed a multitude. 5,000 men, the only reason they only counted the men is because they only counted the head of the house, the household. So 5,000 men with their wives and children, and you understand the Jews did not have family planning. They didn't have families, they had tribes. So there was something close to a, maybe fifteen to 20,000 people and Jesus borrowed a boy's lunch to perform a miracle. He borrowed somebody's coin to illustrate a sermon and to ask a question when somebody asked him, shall we pay taxes to Caesar? And, and Jesus borrowed a coin and said, whose image is on the coin? They said, it's the image of Caesar. And then he said, give to Caesar what's Caesar and give to God what's God. It's almost like the, the, the teaching is not finished. It's almost like the guy that asked the question should have asked another question. If I give to Caesar what's Caesar and give to God what's God's, what belongs to God? To which Jesus would probably say, whose image is on your face? But the point is he borrowed a coin to illustrate the answer and to illustrate a teaching. He borrowed a boat of a fisherman because he didn't have a pulpit and he used the boat as a pulpit to preach to the people on the shore. He gave the boat back to the fisherman full of fish. So great was the catch that the fisherman had to uh, borrow the boats of other people and tell them to come and help him uh, take the catch to shore. The point of uh, that we are making is that Jesus borrowed a boat. He borrowed a donkey to ride into the city. He borrowed somebody's upper room so that they, he and his disciples can have the Last yes. Supper. And when he came to death, he borrowed a grave. Mm. 
because he didn't have one. The king of heaven, the one that created the heavens and the earth, was not ashamed to borrow even a tomb because he didn't have anything. This is the amazing paradox about Jesus. He was so rich that he could feed 5,000. He, he invited 5,000 households for afternoon tea. And he was able to feed them. He was so rich that the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yet Paul, when Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, said Jesus Christ was rich. But he became poor that he, you and I, through his poverty, we might be enriched. Mm. How rich was Jesus? Very rich. Mm. How poor was Jesus? Very poor. In fact, the Bible says, in his poverty, we become rich. The word poverty is beggar. Jesus became a beggar so that you and I might be rich. And where was Jesus poor? Well, he didn't have a home to lay his head. The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. The Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. But nowhere was Jesus more poor than at the cross of Calvary. Amen. The Bible tells us <clears throat> that uh, Jesus Christ on the cross took the curse of the law and gave to us the blessing of Abraham. Yes. So something was exchanged at the cross of Jesus Christ. Mm. Jesus took the curse of the law, the punishment for you and I having broken the law of a holy God. Mm. Jesus took that upon himself and gave to us the blessing of Abraham. The Bible tells us that God blessed Abraham in everything. Mm. The blessing of Abraham was everything that uh, Abraham did. He was blessed. God promised Abraham that he was going to be Jehovah Jireh, that every need that Abraham had was going to be met. Jesus Christ gave us the blessing of Abraham and took upon himself on the cross of Calvary the penalty of the broken law, the curse of the law. So let's look at that and see what that entails so that we may be aware and understand of the price mm. that Jesus paid on our behalf. Jesus was made to be the rebel that you and I are. Mm. Jesus was made to be the, the one that breaks the law. We are the one that broke the law, but Jesus took that upon himself mm. that you and I might be made whole. The curse of the law is in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. The blessing of obeying the law and the curse of disobeying the law. And this is what it says regarding Jesus on the cross and what he did as Galatians tell us. And this is what it says in verse 45 of Deuteronomy 28. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you. All these curses will come upon you and overtake you until you are destroyed. And then it says, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. It also says this, and they shall be upon you for a sign and a wonder and on your descendants forever. It says the curses will come upon you to be a sign and a wonder. Not the blessing of God will come upon you to be a sign and a wonder, but the curses of the law. And then it says this, Therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, 
and in need of everything. The Bible says you will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you and you will serve them in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness and in need of everything. In all his life, Jesus gave up his rights. Mm. He was completely 100% dependent on his father. Mm. Everything he did, he did because of his father. And even the works that he did, he said, the work that I do, it's not me doing the work. Mm. It's my father in me. He does the work. Amen. Here is a man who has absolutely no original idea. He said, I only do the things I see my father doing, mm. and I only say the things I see my father right saying. Yeah. I come from the father. I'm going back to the father. Mm. The work that I do, it's not me that's doing it. It's the father in me that does the work. Amen. I can of myself to do absolutely nothing. It is my father that helps me. Without him, I can do nothing. He said, I can't do anything without the father. And in everything that he did, laying down his life, laying down his reputation, mm -hmm. everything that he did, he did because his father was with him. Amen. And now on the cross Amen. of Calvary, the Bible says he took our curses and exchanged it for the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And this is the curse of the law. It says, you will serve your enemies in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of everything. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus was hungry, hadn't eaten for 24 hours, more than a day. He was so thirsty, he asked for water. They gave him vinegar, made him more thirsty. He was naked on the cross. He served his enemies in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, and in need of everything. Mm. You and I, our needs are met according to God's riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But on the cross, Jesus was in need of everything. No food, no water, no clothes, no friends, no families. Nobody in need of everything. But the greatest need, the greatest thing that came upon him on the cross of Calvary is that this father who was always with him. He walked away. You will never be forsaken. God will always be with you. The only man that God ever forsook was Jesus Christ. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, Amen. no food, no drink, no clothes, no friends, and no God. Amen. He cried out and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The only man that was ever forsaken Amen. by God was Jesus Christ. And he was forsaken so that you and I might be found. Amen. That's the price that was paid on our behalf. Jesus Christ took the curse of the law and gave to us the blessing of Abraham. Amen. The blessing of Abraham is not just things. Mm. The blessing of Abraham is not something. The blessing of Abraham was Jehovah. God said to Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Yes. Jesus took the curse of the law and gave to us the blessing of Abraham, God Almighty, who is able to meet all our needs according to his riches and glory, whose shepherdship mean that we will not want, mm. leads me beside still waters, leads you beside still waters, makes us to lie down in green pastures. Why? because Jesus took the curse of the law mm. that we might find the blessing of Abraham and come to know the, sa the saving grace of the Lord mm. who gave his life for you and I. We have hope today because Jesus Christ 
died for us. And as we come to the table of the Lord, Fia is going to come and join me. I want you to uh, understand something. In the Bible, Jesus never tells us to remember his resurrection, even though we remember that. Jesus never tells us to remember his birth, even though we celebrate that. But the Bible tells us, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death until he comes. He tells us to remember his death, to remember what he did on the cross of Calvary, mm. to remember the price that was paid on our behalf, Amen. to remember what he's done. Mm. And he said, uh, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, yeah. you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Paul said, uh, Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread and broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At your home, I trust you've got some emblems Amen. that you can celebrate communion with us and remember the death of the one that died for us and rose again for our justification. Amen. After the supper, he took the cup and he said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. There's tremendous hope in partaking of communion. We remember what has happened in the past. Mm. We are eating right now, but we also are looking ahead he said, remember his death until he comes. Jesus is coming back again. Yes. But we remember his death today and the price that was paid for us. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly thank Father, you. we thank you. thank you. Thank you, Lord, for sending Jesus, your son. Thank you, Jesus, for coming. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for the price that you paid that we might be reconciled to the Father, mm. that our sins may be forgiven, yes. and we might live mm. by your life. Lord, as we celebrate mm. Easter, Lord God, as we celebrate your death, mm. Father, we pray that you'll instill in us again an awareness of the value that you gave to us, Lord God, yes, Lord. and the price that you paid. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Thank Father, you, Lord. we bless you. Father. Bless your people as we eat and drink. Thank you, Father. That we may appropriate afresh thank you, Lord. what was done mm. for us on the tree of Calvary. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. Let's eat together. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. And let us drink together.
Tina for sharing that uh, song with us. Jesus died on our behalf. He gave his life for you and I that we might live and live a life that is more abundant. We might have a hope of eternal life. Coronavirus can kill the body, but can't kill the spirit. Mm. Not everybody will have coronavirus, but everybody suffers from a disease that can destroy you forever. Mm. That disease is sin. Mm. The amazing thing is, there is no remedy for the corona at the moment, but there is a remedy for sin. Mm. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. Whatever you committed, whatever you've done. The hymn writer says it's this, the vilest offender who truly believes a moment from Jesus, a pardon received. Jesus cares for us that while we were yet enemies, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You don't have to live a life that is flooded with guilt, you don't have to live a life that is full of uh, bitterness. You can come to the one that died on the cross of Calvary and find forgiveness. Even though Jesus was righteous and innocent, he died on your behalf that you and I might be redeemed. Pilate Amen. saying, I, I find no, no fault with this man. Pilate's wife sent a note to Pilate and he said, you be very careful of that man. That man is a righteous man. Judas threw away the price that he was given to betray Jesus and Judas said, I betrayed the innocent blood. The centurion at the foot of the cross looking up and said, surely this is the son of the living God. Yet he died, carried your sickness, your sin and mine, that through his death, that sin might be forgiven. We might be reconciled to God the Father, and we might live by his life. Mm -hmm. And this morning, we have a tremendous hope that Jesus Christ in us is the hope of glory. And if you have not accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, or maybe you have uh, walked away from God, you find no sense in that. But today, something is happening in your heart. You want to come back to the Lord and give your life to Jesus Christ. I'd love to uh, yes. pray with you mm. and lead you to know Him. Amen. One day, I did the same thing. I gave my life to the Lord. Mm. I, I asked God to come into my life. I went to church, but going to church does not mean that uh, mm. you're going to be a Christian. Much like uh, going to a garage is going to make you a mechanic. I went to church. I sang hymns. I prayed prayers. But there was no personal relationship with Jesus mm. until the day I realized that uh, I was a sinner going to hell on roller skates without Jesus. And I asked Christ into my heart, into my life. And I've never been the same since. I love Jesus, serve Him with all my heart. Mm. Want my family to uh, serve Him, my wife and I, our children. We love the Lord, serve Him. Mm. And until the day He returns, we will continue to do that. Yeah. So today, you want to give your life to the Lord, I'm going to pray a simple prayer. Now, everybody can pray, but this is a prayer that uh, one who gives their life to Jesus will pray. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not going to come into your heart without invitation. Jesus is a gentleman. He needs to be invited. And this is a prayer of invitation, asking Christ to come into your life and be Lord and Savior of your life. So let us pray. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize that uh, I'm far away from you. I realize that I am a sinner and in need of your forgiveness. Right now, Jesus, I turn away from my sin and I turn to you. I'm sorry for my sin. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I open up my heart to you. Come into my heart. Live in me. Forgive me of my sin. And help me to serve you. I give you my life today. Serve you the rest of my days. Help me, Lord God, to live in victory. Thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then if you meant it with all your heart and sincerely, then today you become a Christian and know the power of sins forgiven. I encourage you to pray. When you pray, you're talking to God and be open with God. I also encourage you to read the Bible as much as you can. And if you can find friends that will help you with your faith, that will be great. And uh, there will be others that you can ring and uh, they'll be able to help you. Thank you for those that rang last uh, during the week to let me know that uh, they were the ones that we prayed for with a bladder condition last Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thank you to those people. There was about five of them. And uh, we pray mm -hmm. that God will just bless you and thank you for your feedback. Mm -hmm. and today, if you've given your life to Jesus today, if you can find a way to let us know, that will be great. And we'll see that you have some material and some people that will be around you to help you great. with your newfound faith. God enrich you and bless you this Easter weekend. We look forward to Sunday's service. It will start again at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. It will probably again be telecast uh, uh, again at 11 o'clock on, on Sunday Sunday morning. And uh, But it will be 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock Sunday morning. We look forward to that. But right now, if you've got any needs, let me just pray for us. Amen. Father, we thank you and honor you. We Amen. give you glory and praise. We pray that your people would be blessed. Mm. Mm. Touch their lives, Lord God, and meet the need of everyone, Father, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. We honor you today. You're a great God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day.